Hello, this is our 14th session in the New Testament Crom blog. I'm Hilary and we are in some very well-known verses in Luke's Gospel. But before we get into Mary's story, Elizabeth is still on my mind. Now, on the way to Elizabeth, Mary is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth is going to see this, saying to her that she is blessed and has joyfully chosen to obey. Now, Elizabeth, remember, is hidden away herself in seclusion. This was her spiritual decision that she makes. And her days must have been quiet and reflective, hopeful of what is to come. And it's into this atmosphere that Mary bursts in unexpectedly. Have you ever felt like you were meant to do something for reasons that you don't understand? You just know it's a spiritual thing. You know, perhaps it's a fast or a silent retreat or an event and it's not until you're well into it or even after it that you discover the why of why you felt to do it. And there's usually a cost to that kind of journey, whether it's a literal cost or a time cost or hunger, or in Elizabeth's case, it's community. The cost is connection with people. I once felt really strongly to go to thousands of miles and thousands of pounds away to a conference. And I sat there for three days at the back, mainly listening to teaching that I had heard before, to be honest. And I was really beginning to wonder, why did I feel to do this? And then there was one worship time that I just got on my knees in his presence. And I had a very significant prophetic vision. And when I came out of it, I knew this is why I was to come here. Why he couldn't have given me that at home, I'm not sure. But like I say, significant moments often have this kind of cost to it. It seems to be the way that it works. And we often long for those kind of experiences and connection moments with God without being willing to do what it might require. Now, there's not an indication that Elizabeth knows that she's waiting for something. Perhaps she senses that something is building. Perhaps it is a total surprise. But I wonder if in retrospect, or even at the moment that the jigsaw pieces started to fit together. It's time to go to Mary's experience. And if we're gonna go a bit deeper in our understanding of such a familiar story, it's helpful to keep reading it in these different translations. Repetition really aids meditation, aids us going deeper and the mulling on it helps to reveal those angles that we just haven't seen before. In the sixth month, Gabriel the angel was sent from God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man called Joseph from the family of David. The virgin was called Mary. Greetings, favoured one said the angel when he arrived. May the Lord be with you. She was disturbed at this and wondered what such a greeting might mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel said to her. You're in favour with God. Listen, you will conceive in your womb and will have a son and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be a great man and he'll be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never come to an end. How will this happen? said Mary to the angel. I am still a virgin. Well, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, replied the angel, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason, the Holy One who is born from you will be called God's Son. Let me tell you this too. Your cousin Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. This is the sixth month for her. A woman who people used to say was barren. With God you see, nothing is impossible. Here I am, said Mary. I am the Lord's servant girl. Let it be to me as you've said. Then the angel left her and Mary got up there and then and went in excitement to the hill country of Judea. She went to Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Let's stop there for now.
as Zacharias wanted to know, how will I know that this is going to happen? His primary concern is much more about himself. Mary just wants to know, how will this happen? Not if it will happen. Her primary concern seems to be more about the prophecy, like she doesn't want to get in the way of it. I love the way the angel Gabriel gives Mary a piece of juicy, heavenly gossip just to boost her faith. He explains the way that her pregnancy is going to happen, but he follows it up with this kind of wait till you hear this moment, this also. And it implies that Mary didn't know that Elizabeth was pregnant. Of course, she is in hiding. And it would have been another wow moment for Mary just to help her to make her decision. Because she is chosen, but you do get the sense that she has a choice in this moment. There is a moment right before she says, may it be done as you have said, this moment of choice. And Mary's not like Zachariah or Elizabeth or Abraham or Sarai. Their cultural shame was their barrenness, but Mary's cultural shame will be her pregnancy. I know there are times that it doesn't seem like God gives the person much of a choice, but in this case, I see God giving Mary a choice. She has to, she has to say the word, she has to agree to this partnership. And between the angel and getting to Elizabeth's house, Mary is going to have another experience of God. The Holy Spirit will come upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her. Now, this is a future tense statement when the angel gives it to her. I wonder what Mary's experience was of being overshadowed by God's power. The word for overshadowed is rarely used actually. The only two other times being Jesus' baptism when God spoke from the bright cloud and when there's power in Peter's shadow to heal the sick. This is a really powerful experience for Mary because it changes her perspective. She goes from being confused to, um, but very faithful, to being faith-filled and kind of delivering this prophetic statement, prayer, song. Like Zechariah and Elizabeth, she's on this spiritual journey, but she's also on a literal journey because it's about a hundred miles of road that she is traveling. And it says that she hurried. It's a word that means that she was really eager to get there, that she was in haste, like somebody on a mission. Like she just knew that she needed to get to Elizabeth, that things are going to make a lot more sense if she can just get to Elizabeth. And the jigsaw pieces are starting to come together. Both women experience this filling of the Holy Spirit. Both of them will speak incredible words to one another. And that is going to be our next session. And I'm going to see you then.